Hello, everyone, and welcome to Knights of the Pageless Library. We are a little podcast about reviewing audiobooks. I am Bo Knight, and joined, as always, by my brother, Ryan Knight. And today, we are taking a look at the picture of Dorian Gray, written by Oscar Wilde and narrated by Russell Tovey. Yeah, and if anybody has anything to say about this, or any other book, or anything, really, please let us know. Please email us, kotpl.pod at gmail.com. You can get a hold of us on Facebook. We are KOTPL Cast over there. If uh, that's something that interests you, I can't figure out how to get it to look more like an actual business. So, if you see us over there, that is us. With don't that, we have a Twitter too? <clears throat> yeah, we do. I don't really get on there very often. We I'm pretty sure we're at Pageless Library on Twitter. So yeah, you know, tweet at us over there. Whatever the kids do these days. <laughs> yeah, give us those Elon Musk coins. Yeah. We're on YouTube also, if, you, if you're into that kind of thing. I, I usually put these up on YouTube at some point, so if you have YouTube Premium or whatever it's called, and you can listen for free or whatever, listen with your phone locked over there or something, then you can find us over there too. Yeah, there's not a video component, correct? I mean, I put a video on there. There's just not much to it. But I mean, that's, not, that's not what I mean. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were like showing something else. I wasn't. I don't. I don't watch it obviously. No, no. Just I usually put like a background picture and a couple other things in there every once in a while. Subliminal messaging behind all that stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> Consume. <laughs> it's probably why our YouTube does better than some of the other stuff. All of my subliminal messaging I put in there. Yeah, probably. You're doing good. All right. So the picture of Dorian Gray. So we tried to record this episode once already. Uh, had some internet issues. We very well could have them again. Don't know what's going on. Um, so please bear with us. Yeah. Buckle up. Okay. This book, old school. When did this book come out? 1890. 1890, yeah. yeah. Not 1990, 1890. Yeah. Yeah, the joke doesn't make any sense, but okay. <laughs> and this, uh, this was originally published in Lepcott Monthly Magazine, which we talked about this a little bit in the with the episode that never is going to air, but I think we should talk about it again. I think back in the day, freaking magazines must have been lit. If you could have just like picked up a magazine and stumbled across the, the picture of Dorian Gray in there, that would have been really cool. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit because... Like Lovecraft's early stuff was all published in magazines as well. And yeah, that would have been crazy to be able to pick up a magazine and get these full, full fledged stories coming out every month in, in these article styles. That would be awesome. Yeah. And then it was, it was also later published as a, not like a standalone novel too. If so, if somebody didn't have access to the magazine, they could have picked up just the book itself. Right. As we said, too, this is the Russell Tovey version of the book. If you get on Audible, which is where we listen to this at, and you search the picture of Dorian Gray, there are a lot of iterations of the story narrated by a lot of different people. So just know we're talking about the Russell Tovey one that came out in 2017. If you listen to one of the other ones, your mileage may vary compared to the experience we had. Yes, that's very true. What did you think about Russell Tovey in this one? I think he does a great job. I, I I think he adds a lot to this one. He is he's very like expressive, and he has a lot of pitches that he can do. And I I I, so, I see some people like to complain that he doesn't do women very well, but I would kind of disagree. I think I think he kind of does like that that like fancy man speak very well. I don't yeah, know. How did I, you feel about it? <clears throat> I thought he did good. This would actually be more apt to when I was saying the other book that we did, comparing it to that South Park episode with Pip when he gets all fancy. Yeah. This would be much more like that. But in this one, I thought it fit pretty well because that is who these guys are. They're all fancy like Englishmen. Yeah. Real upper crust types. Right. Yeah. You haven't seen the show Bridgerton, have you? Uh-uh. Okay, so this 
kind of reminds me of that because in that show it seems like those people they're all fancy pants people and they don't do anything else other than just be fancy pants people yeah it's very strange that is kind of how life was back then i think <laughs> just like yeah. go to the opera freaking hang out drink yeah get pictures painted of you yeah yeah you just like stand for a portrait for a couple hours yeah at no point in this is anybody like oh yeah i'd love to hang out tomorrow but i gotta go to my job uh, yeah nobody ever says i have to work no <laughs> <laughs> barely work is true. Just having meetings where you just drink wine and yeah, at 10 o'clock in the morning and talk yeah. about being rich and stuff like that so yeah yeah that is exactly what they talk about <laughs> <laughs> um so for anybody who doesn't know i'll just do a real quick kind of summary of this <clears throat> the picture of Dorian Gray is a story about Dorian Gray, this guy who gets his picture painted. He makes a wish that he would basically stay young forever and that his picture would age instead of him. And essentially that wish comes true is basically what this story is about. And the things that transpire because of his picture aging and taking on his sins instead of his body. Yeah. That was very, a very apt uh, synopsis there. This book, so we talked about this a little bit in our the lost episode. This book on Audible falls under the LGBTQ plus community. And <clears throat> I just want to talk about that again really quick because we had a long conversation about it when we tried this before. Yeah, we did. Uh, <laughs> um, I got those vibes a little bit from this book when I started listening to it that uh, several of the main characters, Dorian Gray and the guy who paints him and, and uh, what's his name? Lord Henry, those guys. I did get a little bit of like, these guys kind of gay for each other. However, you have a different take on that. What, what do you think? I feel like they're just, I, I mean, I think the artists very well could be gay. That's fine. But I, I feel like Dorian Gray and Lord Henry's relationship, I don't feel like there's anything romantic going on between the two of them at all. I feel like they're just right. kind of like fancy men, and that's just how they used to act. And I, I kind of feel like there are a lot of like overtones being put on this book that are not there. Yeah, and we talked about that a little bit. The fact that it almost seems like they shoehorned in the kind of homosexual narrative way after the fact. Yeah, exactly, and it's not like we could ask Oscar Wilde if right. that's the case and it, yeah it, it just it just feels a little weird to me because it's like those were not like my main takeaways was like oh man dorian gray is super gay that's not right. that was those are like that's not even in my top like 20 takeaways from this book <laughs> and it, it just feels a little weird to me that it's like this is something that they latched on to sure that that even even if like yes there are a little things that are a little gay but not that that's a problem i wouldn't care but i don't feel i i did not get those vibes personally right I, yeah i get what you're saying and yeah let's make that abundantly clear we don't care it, i mean if gay not gay that doesn't bother us at all I mean, it, that's not the issue the issue is that it does seem that those things are not in the story but because they could be subtly hinted at they threw this LGBT tag on there and they're like, yep, this is a, this is a story about gay people, but that's not really in the story at all. Like there no. are no, there is no homosexuality or anything that is very abundant. I mean, I guess if you really wanted to try to write your own story between the lines of this, you could easily do that. Well, you could do that with anything. You could freaking Harry exactly. Potter's actually about Ron yeah. and freaking Harry being in love like right exactly i just yeah i find that very strange that they put that tag on this when the, i feel like that's almost misleading let's say that i i think it also is misleading and that's kind of why it like gets my hackles up a little exactly. bit because yeah like if you're coming into this expecting like a like a like a like a man-on-man -man romance that's not what this is exactly and i think that's the only reason it really bothers me too is because if that is what you're looking for that's not what you're going to find. Yeah, it's, you're going to come away from this. And, right. You're going to come away from this and be like, that was not a romantic love story between two men at all. No, because that's not what this story is. No, it's not about that at all. Like, it's, I don't know. It's just, 
yeah it's so yeah if, if you're if you're like oh well i like i like i want to read that it's supposed to be like super freaking inclusive it's like ah, i don't know i don't I, th- I think that's a bit of a stretch i agree yeah i think that that was kind of slapped on i yeah i don't really think that this does fit that idea like i said at first i was kind of getting those vibes from it that's not what the story is though at no all. No, no, it's it not. definitely fits the categories that follow that the mystery thriller and suspense much that's much more what this is yeah for sure so what do you think let's let's get the uh the big questions out of the way was this one easy to follow uh i mean i think so but i think for someone who hasn't been listening to a lot of old books like i have lately probably not because it is very flowery lots of big words Lots of words you don't hear on a normal conversation, but like for me, especially coming off of like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, it wasn't very hard. I was already in that mindset, and it, it went down really smooth for me. Sure. I, I don't think this is very easy to follow for the exact reasons that you stated, because old school language, very flowery, very descriptive language, almost overly so. Because sometimes there's a lot of descriptors and very little actually happens during those descriptors. So I don't think this is easy to follow, but I think that's just a product of its time. Not necessarily, can't necessarily hold that against the book. No, I don't, I don't think that would be fair. And I think Russell Tovey does a great job reading this one. So I do think that that is a good leg up for this story. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I, yeah, I, I think he adds a lot. A- and he he is very defined in the characters that he's voicing. Not that there are a ton of characters in this book, because there really aren't. There are really like really three main people. Right. But I, I, I do think that lends a lot to like the clarity of it. We should mention, too, that this book comes in right about eight and a half hours. Uh, I forgot to mention that earlier. So not a super long story by any means. No, this is a relatively like, for me, this is like bite size. This is like a day. Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, yeah, you can actually listen to it pretty quickly. We also should mention that Dorian Gray is part of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would be Even though I, like, I, I feel like that has nothing to do with this book. <laughs> no, it's the way it's depicted in that movie, which is kind of because I had never actually heard this story in obviously from start to finish so i was kind of expecting the way it works in league of extraordinary gentlemen and yeah it's not at all what no he's not like a vampire who's a badass (laughs) right they very very loosely based his character on this story yeah i mean basically other than like there's a painting and he doesn't age that's about it (laughs) yeah those are about the only two similarities yeah. (laughs) yeah so what's your what's your overall recommendation on this one I really, really enjoyed this one. I love kind of this dissection on like like human vanity and how like your morals kind of play a role in like how beautiful you are and and like and the and the and also like the corrupting force that other people can be on your morality. like I, I really thought this was like an a, a very interesting book to me about like how how somebody can be super beautiful but also be like a piece of shit and that usually will show on their face but since like dorian gray doesn't the 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 painting takes all those things not him that he's kind of able to go through life without a care in the world and be just like a debaucherous piece of shit like i i thought that was a really interesting ideal and i i really like this book i listened to it a couple times just i i love the themes of it and i i don't know if i have like i'm just getting old but i really enjoy this like old flowery writing and like you said it can be a little bit too descriptive but i i like that like really painting the scene like very heavily yeah i, think- I enjoyed it a lot I liked this one more i think than Twenty Thousand leagues i would say i'll say this one's pretty dense so even though it's short, it is kind of dense. If you're if you're looking for something pretty lighthearted and no, easy don't listen to listen to, <laughs> yeah, don't don't pick something like this. This is going to be very. You have to pay attention to when you're listening to this one. You cannot kind of you know have your mind wandering and still understand exactly what's going on. 
and and so, this deals with some very heavy things. Mm -hmm. So like if if you don't like like suicide or like honestly like flippant disregard for other human beings. Yeah. For sure. Like you might have a hard time getting through this one. Right. Overall, I wouldn't say this is a a bad story. This is cool to listen to and see where because Dorian Gray kind of like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde 20,000 leagues they've all been redone so many times in so many different ways it's it is nice to see where the original story comes from yeah sure. i agree yeah i i really enjoyed this one and i don't i this honestly makes me want to check out like more older books just because i i feel like nobody writes like this anymore no i think this stuff is yeah this is kind of a lost or at least dying kind of art is the way and, these guys and for me it was back like, in the 1800s it, it was very refreshing because like i had no idea at any point where the story was really going sure and I, I i really enjoyed it like i i'm not gonna lie like this is probably one of my favorite books it's i i really liked it so there you go so you got one super thumbs up and i'm i'm kind of middle of the road like i enjoyed this <clears throat> but i'm not gonna be i'm definitely not hardcore about this one being one of my favorites uh, I did enjoy finding out where this, the context for this tale comes from, though. That was, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So what do you think? Can we pass the spoiler wall? But yeah. Yeah. I mean, we kind of already kind of spoiled it a little bit. Yeah. So for anybody who's new here, we'll, we'll just, uh, we'll pass the spoiler wall, which basically means we're just going to talk about the whole story as best as we can remember it. So if this is something you think you might want to listen to, please pause the podcast, go listen to the book. And then come back here and hear what we have to say about it. Yeah. So and, this one's yeah. Go ahead. The, the way this one starts off, what what is the guy's name who paints him? Why can't I remember? It starts with a B. Uh, Basil Hallwood. Basil Hallward. Hallward. <clears throat> Hallward. Okay. Yeah. So because this starts off with Basil and Henry, right, having a conversation. Lord Henry. Yeah. Lord Henry. <clears throat> and they're talking about this young man, Dorian Gray. Well, actually, what they're talking about is he's showing him his painting, and he's like, man, this, that's the best painting. Like, He's not done with Dorian Gray yet, but he's like, that's the best painting you've ever done. You have to show this to everyone. Like, Who is your model for this? And Basil's like, I don't even want you to meet him. You're a piece of shit. I mean, that's not what he says, but he basically alludes to, he's like, I know you are like a corrupting force, Lord Henry. And right. like, if you get a hold of this man, you will ruin him. Mm-hmm. And of course, at this time, like the butler comes in and is like, "Dorian Gray is here for the painting, sir." And and immediately, freaking uh, Lord Henry's like, "Ooh, I'm so happy! I can't wait to meet this man." Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so when Dorian comes up to sit to have his painting finished, Basil tries to get Lord Henry to leave. Yeah, and but. Dorian ends up meeting Lord Henry and they kind of talk a little bit, right? And Dorian's like, no, you, you have to let him stay and, yeah, and it's, talk it's, to me while it's I It's a sit. dreadful bore to stand for your paintings for hours on end and you never talk. Right, yeah, that's exactly very good representation of the language they use. Yeah. <clears throat> so essentially while Basil is finishing this painting and Lord Henry and Dorian are talking, Basil finishes the painting right and yep. it's it is his masterpiece it's his crowning it's yeah, the best thing he's ever done and because apparently dorian gray is the most handsome young man that he could have ever put onto a canvas okay but dorian ends up talking with lord henry because they go outside right and they talk more yeah they like go out in his like fancy garden mm -hmm. and Basically, those two hit it off, and Dorian wants to continue kind of hanging out with Lord Henry because he thinks that well, and is and this is where the corruption starts because Lord Henry says to Dorian Gray, "Youth is the only thing worth having. Other than youth, there's nothing else in the life that you could want." And so they come back inside, oh, yeah. and this is where Dorian Gray makes his wish. He wishes he wishes the painting would age instead of him. Right, because he, he sees does the painting that because of lo what Lord Henry said. Right, and he also because he sees the painting and he sees how well it captures his likeness at that moment in time. Yeah, he wishes that the painting would age and not him, so that he could retain his youth. Yeah, it, is this where the the time skip kind of happens? Or no, 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 because 
af- shortly after this, right, is when he says he he likes the the actress girl, right? Yeah, I mean, like, there's a couple more, like, uh, you know, they meet in the salon, which is not like what you think it is. It's like where fancy men go to drink and smoke cigars. And they like, you know, they talk a little bit about like, you know, the nature of life and how Lord Henry basically respects nobody and treats people like objects and uses them for his own pleasure and only puts his own pleasure above himself. And like, it's kind of corrupting Dorian Gray Mm -hmm. more and more. But then, yes, like the next day, he's like, yeah, I met this most amazing actress. Dorian Gray says this, sorry. Uh, He's like, I met this most amazing actress. I'm going to ask her to marry me. And, and and immediately freaking Lord Henry's like whoa 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 you can't marry anybody you're too beautiful you you're super rich and she's just like some commoner you can't do that and he's like no 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 you got to come see your act like it's it's amazing like it's it, it'll blow your mind and they go right. they go watch her act her name is Sybil Vane Sybil they, Vane yeah they go they go watch Sybil Vane act and she is terrible like horrible she's doing a, a Romeo and Juliet and it's just like super mundane I, I think lord henry even like is like she's awful i don't care you're dumb and leaves <laughs> like doesn't even watch the whole performance yeah and, then, and doesn't <clears throat> well because ahead. doesn't doesn't Sybil do that because she also because she she only knows dorian as prince charming at this yes. point too. well no he she knows who dorian is but she tells people oh she prince does charming okay so she though right because she is a good actress but well yeah the, the, she explains that when dorian goes backstage to be like that was horrible <laughs> yeah because doesn't she say well i thought that because you loved me it wouldn't matter no matter what right isn't well, that basically she, what happens she says since you love me i'm no longer inspired to act because i have everything i need from you right so she's all about his love and basically at this point when he's like what were you doing out there that was awful and she she explains that that she loves him so everything's okay because she doesn't need acting anymore she she loves dorian and she has everything she needs and he's like uh yeah no i i don't want to see you ever again (laughs) yeah he's like you you spoiled it to me like i only liked you because you were great and now they're no longer great i don't love you anymore yeah, he just straight up tells her that she part is, is a brutal, piece of shit. Dude. Yeah. It's so brutal. <clears throat> and kind of leading up to this was Sybil having a conversation with both her mother and her brother, who was... Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that part. He was leaving to go overseas, and I only bring that up what because... Australia, it, right? I think, or something? I think so, yeah. And I only bring it up because it does come up again in the story. Yeah, it does. So, shortly after dorian tells sybil all of this lord henry's like you did the right thing that lady was just the worst well he's a little dorian gray at first is a little distraught uh sybil kills herself because he was so mean to her she just she commits suicide yeah and and dorian gray is a little shooken up at first he's like oh my god i can't believe i did that dorian essentially lord henry says don't even worry about it don't feel bad she was a horrible person which is obviously not true. She loved Dorian, and he's the one who told her she sucks because of that. I, I mean, at first, Dorian is really shaken up by this, and then Lord Henry's like, "Nah, nah, nah! Stop being an idiot. Come out to dinner with us." Right. Blah blah blah. You're 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 freaking sick. Don't let anybody freaking like that disturb your mind. Mm-hmm. It'll make you so ugly. And I think is is this when he first takes a look at the picture? Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> Dorian has been keeping the picture because Basil gave it to him because Basil was going to show it, right? He was going to take it to Paris or whatever, but they said, no, y- you know, I Dorian wanted yeah. the picture. And Dorian looks at it after this happens, and he notices there's like a wrinkle on the face that is not on his own face. There's now something that changed about the painting. And like a malicious grin. And this is the first time you realize that his wish came true, that the painting is aging and taking his burdens instead of his own physical body. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, which is never explained why that, why, why it works that way, but it's just a magic painting, I guess. But that was the part that kind of bothered me, yeah, is they don't ever really explain why it works that way it just yeah it just does so there you go and i mean the next there's like a lot more like conversation and like there's a lot a lot more like time skip stuff but like dorian there's is getting into pretty some pretty like big time skip right? nasty shit like well not a huge time skip i think because 
uh, Basil Hallward goes to see Dorian, and he's like, oh my god, I heard about Sybil Vane. Like, you must be devastated. Like, I, I'm sure you're just like a shut-in, never leaving the house. And he's like, what do you mean? I, I went out with Lord Henry yesterday. It's like, I'm having a great right. time. And he's like, he's like, you're not shaken up by this at all? Right. Like, are you, are you, are you, are you kidding? And he's like, no, I'm fine. It's, it's all good. But, yeah, but then doesn't after Basil that, there's, try a big, to... there's a big time skip. Okay. Wait, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Basil... <clears throat> Wait, this isn't when he, uh, you know... No, he, <clears throat> he, Basil... he comes back, okay. like, years later to talk to Dorian that's what. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, that it was quite a while later. That's right. Okay. No, he, but he comes, it comes to him after he hears about uh, Sybil Vane. Yes, you're correct. So, yeah, then he comes back later... And and Dorian has been dodging Basil. Like he won't he won't meet him. He he Basil literally goes to his house, hangs out with his butler all night, and Dorian never shows up. And he does this like multiple times a week. And then he happens right. to catch Dorian one day, and he like corners him, and he's like, "Dorian, I've heard that you were doing some like debaucherous shit. Is this true?" And he's like, "Dorian is real coy about it at first, and then he gives him his journal." And like he reads it and he's like, This can't be true. Like, Dorian, you are better than this. I you are such a pure soul. And yeah, do you do you, do you want to talk about the Yeah, so while at, as Basil <laughs> reads this stuff, Basil's just like, Man, I can't believe this. And he's sitting at the table, and Dorian kind of gets up and walks around him and just grabs a knife and fucking stabs him like in the side of the neck yeah dude like because he doesn't like the way he's talking i did about not him. see that coming at all no no and you have to remember these guys were at one point really really good friends yeah like oh my god that's the I, part that's I was like devastated i was like oh no my boy basil yeah especially because basil did absolutely nothing no we didn't like, do anything <laughs> he's just like dorian quit being a piece of shit yeah it's horrible yeah and so after that <clears throat> there's there's also a lot of stuff in this, correct me if I'm wrong, that's going on kind of behind the scenes too, right? That you don't get a full picture of because Dorian goes to some guy, I can't remember his name, and he's like, hey, uh, I got a situation I need you to take care of. And this guy's like, Dorian Gray, I'm not doing anything for you. You're a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. Because Dorian is constantly just burning these bridges with people. He's just like partying right. too hard with them. Yeah, well... So He's a Dorian, chemist. this yeah, the guy he calls right is a yeah. chemist. Yeah, basically tells this chemist, "I need there's a body upstairs, and it needs to be gone by morning, and you have to do it." And the guy's like, "I don't have to do anything for you." And then he blackmails him, right? Yeah, and I, I don't think we get to know what he says, but yeah, he like whispers in his ear something, and he's mm -hmm. like, "Fine, I'll do it." Right. Yeah, and those those were the kinds of things that took me out of the story a little bit because I was like, why you even between these two guys, you don't really know what their relationship is. You just know at this point that this guy does not like Dorian Gray, but you yeah. don't really know why. Well, I I see. I I thought that was okay because it's like Dorian is just living like this fucking debaucherous fucking lifestyle, and clearly just like fucking over every person he meets. Right. And so he's just like jumping from group of friends to group of friends to group of friends to group of friends, and constantly just burning bridges. Right, almost at the behest of Lord Henry. Yeah, who's like, yeah, dude, just live it up. He's yeah. like, you still have your youth. Why not? Yeah, exactly. And this goes on for years, right? Like. 18 years yeah. or something. And like the next big scene, Dorian, he likes to hang out in the slums and just like pick up freaking like whores who don't know any better. Right. And one night he's leaving and this guy stops him and he's well, no, somebody in the bar calls him Prince Charming. Yeah, it's the it's the one lady at the bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She, she's like, you, you know, you like to be called Prince Charming, don't you? And so this guy corners him in an alley. And it's like, I, I heard them call you Prince Charming. You must be the one that killed my sister, Sybil yep. Vane. I right. know, I, I like, I never, we never knew your name, but it has to be you. And, and then he's like, well, if that was 18 years ago, I look, I still look young as hell. Like that couldn't be me. And the guy's like, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. He, he gets out of this guy. So her brother was going to kill him. He, he yeah. pledged that if he ever found Dorian Gray, he would kill him. And. The, it, it's crazy too because it like shatters her brother's mind because he's like oh my god i just almost killed this innocent man yeah. 
because of my feelings, you know. And Dorian's like, oh, I got away with it. Like, yeah. Later, nerds. <laughs> yeah. Dorian ends up looking at his painting again, right? He He's avoided looking at his painting for most of his life at this point. <clears throat> and he goes back up and looks at it, and it just looks awful, right? Well, there's blood on the hands, and there's blood yeah. by oh, his yeah. mouth. After he, that's right, after he killed, after he killed Basil, mm -hmm. right? The the painting itself is actually wet in spots. Yeah, and blood. he looks decrepit, like super yeah. old. The painting is aging in his place yeah. with all these burdens that he would have been feeling physically. Yeah, and the next part that, oh my god, it just, this part just devastates me. So he goes on like this hunting trip with a bunch of other fancy men, and one of like the, the handlers gets shot. And they are so blasé about it. Like, oh, I can't believe, why was he doing downrange? Blah, blah, blah. It was totally yeah. his fault he got shot. Oh, Not my yeah. fault. Blah, blah, blah. And then, <laughs> and then they're like, man, nobody knows who this guy is. He doesn't work here. Uh, yeah, it was Sybil Vane's brother who right. was, who had figured out, it's like, actually, that Dorian Gray is who Sybil Vane was with. Like, that man was right. And he was stalking him. And they, they kill him. Like, oh, my God. And then yeah. they don't even care. No, they literally are like, it doesn't matter. He's just one of the help. Yeah, it's so it's bad. So brutal. And that's, is that one of the last kind of big events that happens? Before? Yeah, this kind of like shatters Dorian, right? He's like, man. Because of, Go ahead. And is it, it's because of the way he sees that they treated him, mm -hmm. right? As, because even though he is another human, they made it seem like it was nothing worse than if they had shot one of the dogs that was yeah. supposed to be chasing out the animals. Mm hmm. Yeah, and this kind of this is the one thing that sort of gets Dorian because he realizes how how horrific that is to treat other people that way, and like how he's living his life. He's just like, I can't go on living with this, and and killing Basil Hallward has really been weighing heavy on his soul this whole time. And yeah, and he's just like, I can't, and he like takes the the cloth off the painting and is looking at it, and it's just like it's so atrocious, and he's like, I can't. I can't continue to live like this. Like I am basically a waste of life and all I do is harm. I don't right. help anyone. Yeah. And so he grabs a knife and then we sort of get this cut away and the, the servants in his house hear a scream from upstairs, like an otherworldly scream. <clears throat> and they go up there to find him, right? They find the painting of dorian looks like they had seen dorian earlier that day but the man dead on the floor is this old decrepit nasty get looking dude with a knife sticking out of his chest and the only reason they are able to identify him as dorian is because of the rings he's wearing right yeah that's right yeah and, and that's, that's that's pretty much the end yeah and that's the end of the book yeah i do like the end i do I like the end, and I like a lot of the uh, those little subtle touches like that. I thought were really, really cool. See, I I love like the theme of like how corrupting somebody, like a, a, another person, can be on your own morality. Right. I I I like that theme, and I feel like it's not used enough. Yeah, because like something like in, as innocent as a friendship doesn't seem like a big deal, but like. People affect you in ways that you don't expect, and like you, they can actively make you a worse person. And you would right. do things you would have never have done on your own without their influence. Right. Well, say, I mean, most people have been through that. When you're, yeah. even if it's just two of you out at the bar or hanging out, and it's like, hey, dude, you want to do some shots? And normally by yourself, you'd never be like, yeah, I want to take shots. But because somebody else was like, come on, let's take some shots. And they keep bugging you. You're like, oh, okay, let's take some shots. I mean, it's, it's very simple things like that that can then lead to bad decisions yeah. and bad things happening. So yeah. And like a complete shift in your own moral compass. Right. It, whether, yeah. Cause like you said, that's not something you would have done on your own, Yeah. but because somebody else was subtly nudging you like, Hey, don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. Just yeah. Go with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really like that theme. Yeah. Moral of the story is Lord Henry's a piece of shit. Yeah. Lord Henry's a piece of shit. <laughs> uh, maybe don't get self portraits. Or at the very least, don't wish that uh, it would take all your burdens for you. Yeah. I, I guess you could do that and then be a good person. 
or or do get a self portrait painting. Who does that in 2022? That would be awesome. It kind of would. I, oh my god, how expensive <laughs> would that be? Oh, it would probably be like twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, it'd still be cool. <laughs> Uh, you just use an app on your phone, makes you look like a painting. Yeah, that's thing, true. Right? Very true. Well, you got anything else on this one? Since I'm sure the this episode probably sounded weird, I might have to try to clip both of our separate audios together. Yeah, we might have to do something. I know there was probably a bit in there in the middle where there was just like dead silence. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I think sorry. I think I got all my ideas out. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. Do we know what we're doing next time at all? Uh, I don't think we've even talked about it. Uh, nope. we, Figure something out if you want. Yeah, I don't think we have. Next thing that'll probably come out will be an anime episode. We've been meaning to get to that for a while, so look forward to that. But as far as the next book goes, I guess if you have any suggestions, please shoot them our way. And yeah, we'll we will take a look. That. Yeah, and I think with that, we will catch you guys in the next one.